Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live here in the UK at midday. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, that's fine. You can do that. But where you really should be is at behance.net slash Adobe Live, because that way you can chat with our fab community and ask questions of myself, Tony Armour, and my fabulous guest, who for the second day running in this three-parter this week is David Glissman. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hello, I am as fine as I was yesterday, and I'm very happy that we managed to do yesterday's stream, and I'm excited for today. Yes, myself too, and as is the community. So let's say hi to some of these fabulous people that go. Kirsty in the chat, she's first in this morning, and Michelle's here. Hi, David Glissman, I think you're there. <laughs> some guy called yep. Tim, I think he's in the background. Uh, just that Melanie is here. Hi, Melanie. Great to see you here. And a guy called Tony Harmer. I don't know anything about him. Sandrine is here. Sean Coso is here. Guten Tag, Sean. Brilliant. And there you are. So everybody keen to carry on. So what's the outline for today then, David? Shall we share your screen and have a quick look at what you're doing today? Yes, absolutely. Cool. <clears throat> We are back into my notion where I have laid out a little bit of what we are doing and what, what we have went and what we have done. Um, just maybe a li little recap of what we did just yesterday. Yeah. We did our gradients and placed them on a grid inside boxes as also known, also known as sticky notes and used some vibrant fancy colors with different blend modes to yes. create a nice layout and yeah also just added some general post layout title and information then we set it up um in ai and xd illustrator and experience design to create the effects that we wanted yes and now we can start to animate things in after effects and i have also a lot of stuff that is in here and that's mostly just for me so i just know which settings i'm using cool. um so not maybe in too much into detail you can see we have some different effects for all of the uh, separate things that we are going to work on and this is also color coded like it is in my after effects project right now the red stuff the green stuff the blue and the purple stuff and mm -hmm. That's what we are going to create today so that we can also do this nice um, post of the design um, that we have already seen yesterday yes. as well, which I will also just show really quickly again. Here it is in After Effects, but the final output will load in just a second okay. over here. Um, yeah, which also just has a lot of added effects, as I have already shown yesterday, um, yeah. that make the effect this smooth as it is. And another thing, of course, that is very valuable in this kind of um, animation, in this kind of design that we are creating, is to not only loop this thing, but loop it in a way that it's seamless and that you can't see where the loop is starting and where the loop is ending mostly. Yes. You can see at some point it will repeat, but um, I think it's pretty hard to see when exactly it happens, like one, two, three, four, or five or six, something like <laughs> that. And I think that's uh, just a very nice thing. It's lovely. Uh, so um, as you can see, the colors right here in this project. And the first thing that I have been um, using or that I have, uh, that is uh, something that is affecting all the effects that we are using as well is um, comp settings, at least uh, the, the size that we are using. So this um, size, this resolution that we are working with, is yep. basically just um, 
the the DIN A3 format in 150 uh, dots per inch or pixels okay. per inch. Um, it doesn't exactly matter, but I think this is just a good in between into something that is overly large for for animation and it's not not really useful and uh, something like 72 dpi uh, which is uh, maybe a little bit too small yeah. so just a nice in between i'll drag it over here so that i can have it um and i think uh, something that i haven't shown yesterday but might be valuable is how to set up um or how to how to get an ai file into your scene as well because we exported it from xd but if you're working with um ai and illustrator uh that is uh, something that might be useful to know as well so basically you can just import a file and then go into your um find your find your file uh, where you have um, put it something uh, like that and okay that's not <laughs> not the not one that we have been using but uh, any of these posters that I have used before I can just uh, use the the file and then just use the composition retain layer files uh, right retain layer sizes yep. excuse me um, to import it and then also the layers will show up the same yeah. way. I actually, I don't uh, have something for this specifically prepared. So maybe I'll just try to use this one. That's okay. And it will be showing up. So uh, now this composition is here. And as you can see, all the layers that are in the file are also showing up. Uh, just, they are just not named right now, but in general, they are here and we could work the same way we could be working with the XD layers. So just that you know how to get your uh, Illustrator file into After Effects as well. And I guess I'll just uh, go back a step so that this is also out of my um, asset browser. And then the other thing, um, if you imported it like if you imported it like that, then you might check your composition settings for the exact reason that um, I think the normal thing to to um, be imported is actually 72 DPI. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, you just can go into your composition settings if you have your composition. Uh, targeted yeah yeah targeted yeah, yeah. yeah i didn't so uh, composition settings or control command k and then you have the settings that are here um yeah. your resolution which is in this case of course because we already prepared it set to the desired resolution of 1754 by 2480 yeah. i also set the frame rate to 60 if you, we already talked about that, if you um, are planning to export it as a GIF, that is not exactly necessary. You can work with like 15, 20, 25, something like that. That is pretty much enough for a GIF. Uh, mm -hmm. But I like to set it up that way so that I can use it freely and in a very flexible way after the project is finished. If I need it in 60, I have it. I don't need to change anything. That's easy and going down is always easier than going up. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that I have said. That's, is, it's handy that you actually are that that you actually gave that out, uh, David, because Sean was asking that a moment or two ago in the chat about the 60 frames a second, uh, to which Tim and I both replied, smoothness. But it's really nice that you spelled it out for people who can't see the chat. Of course. So that's yeah. really handy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then another thing that I said is a duration of 10 seconds. That's usually mostly the highest I go, kind of. Sometimes I think I, I have used like a 12 second loop or something, but the usual for me is like four to five, six seconds, sometimes 10 or something. But you can see I used 10 seconds, which is at the end, but uh, my composition is actually set to about four. 
uh, I just like to have a little bit more space so that I am not uh, clamp uh, clumping everything into all of this and I can't zoom out any further. I just like to have a little, little bit of extra space and of course I still can zoom in if I like. So this whole thing is actually four seconds as a loop, but uh, yeah, I go with something a little bit more than that. Yeah, and then of course we have um, different, um, not really layers, but different groups, I would say groups of yeah. uh, objects that are having kind of the same effect and in that group, the same effect. And then of course, other things that have other effects. So I will talk about that, um, which is, as I already showed the information text, then the title text, the yeah. vibrant squares and the glass uh, squares. And that should be it. Yeah, I think okay. that should, oh, they, the adjustment layer. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. um, that's then the last step to create the final result and that is what we are going to work with today. Excellent. Yep. Good. So um, the first thing that we have already been creating was this little pre-comp, which is down here at right at the bottom in this part, um, or here not exactly in this uh, in the in the lowest, but in just above the background. And I think in the other comp, I just deleted the background because yeah. it will render out as black by default if you don't have a background so um otherwise it would be transparent but because i'm not rendering it transparent it will show up as black anyways so uh, i just went and did this and which uh, we already did yesterday as well set the background color in the composition settings to black so that we are back to that and we don't have an extra layer that we are not using yeah. and then these vibrant squares are already in the pre-comp which is over here you can double click on that to open it as well and then you have all of your uh, squares your vibrant squares in here yeah. set up to be animated for example and that is exactly what i did with these i um, animated the position for each square or I'm not sure if I actually used each square, but I, I just moved them, shifted them a little bit down and up. And that is also pretty straightforward. You can press your position, your P key to set a position keyframe, press the stopwatch. And one thing here, I will set this up for 10 seconds as well. So it's not overly huge and has a lot of space that we are not needing and using. And after like two seconds, for example, I can just move this square and you can see it will create another keyframe. And I can just go on with all of these squares and to make it easier, not jump between the timeline um, from, from zero to one uh, or zero to two and back to, to zero and back and forth all the time, I can just go and, or Maybe if I want to actually save the, the original layout that I have, I just press uh, on Windows, it's Alt Shift P and I think it's Alt P on Mac, as yeah. far as I remember, um, to create a position keyframe at the position that all these squares are currently yeah. having. And then I can go to frame two, for example, and just shift these all over the place randomly mostly like i desire or not and do you have any particular scheme in mind for how you move them do you sort of or, or is it just whatever whatever feels good for you is that the yeah most mostly i'm just trying to to give them all a little bit of a different random direction mm -hmm. but of course um, if you want to have something that is a little less chaotic if you just want them all to go down and then up again like um i don't know a little bit of an elevator feeling or something of course uh, just go for that i think that could be a nice effect as well 
I I think I just didn't really think about that too much. I was just having some kind of movement <laughs> in mind. And the first thing that is usually coming up then for me is just going all over the place. And if that's too much, uh, I can always, of course, go back a little bit. Yeah. So right now, all of these are shifting, which looks very boring. I mean, maybe not as boring as the static image, but it is not very exciting because they're all moving at the same pace at the same time. And also with linear easing without anything that is creating anything, uh, any excitement in the movement. So something that I usually do and whoops, which um, also is good to, or which for which it is good to have some some tools that enable it to automatically do it a little bit, like um, for example, motion tools or anything like that, that yep. is randomly in, or in, has the option to randomly sequence layers. Like I can do just for a quick preview. Oops, wait, let me reset this and then sequence no sequence it by like this so we that we can see a little bit now it's just randomly moving the keyframes all over the place so they are not moving at the same time anymore um but of course if you have time on your hands you can also just uh, grab the keyframes and move them over by hand this one doesn't need it in here and something like that so they are not moving all at the same time so that's already a little bit more exciting but something that is creating even more excitement is just to right click go into the keyframe assistant and easy ease them for example um, and the shortcut for that is f9 on your keyboard so now they're eased and starting slow getting faster and slowing down again a little bit more like things in the physical world would behave because nothing is just at full speed when it starts even rockets aren't <laughs> i think that's pretty obvious um if you yep they all ease into ever, a motion yep. yeah ever <laughs> ever saw a rocket launch you can see that yep. and now if i tap on this little graph editor i can also see how these all look um now they are all visible at once and i can actually change between the graphs usually i go for the speed graph which is um in most cases more helpful for me to to look uh, to to see what i'm looking at and what i'm working with than the uh, value graph so we have this this bow which is basically saying zero speed at this position and max speed at this position and then slowing down again so if i just grab a single curve of these um, let me find one this one for example the square in the middle i can also just um, many manipulate these so now which uh, what is this doing it's ev starting even slower then more um, speed gaining more speed right Tailing at the end off quickly and then yep. yes exactly mm. so you can see that if you just watch the middle square what is happening it's more um, accentuated mm. than all of the rest and if I go back and grab all of the keyframes and basically just do the same thing that I just did, but do it with this kind of tool. Yeah. Um, you can see it again. It's doing basically the same thing. And if I play it back now, you can see the same thing. They are all a little bit more accentuated apart from this one, which uh, just has the easing in both directions now, which, um, whoops, uh, in this case is just like this it's super su fast. super slow yeah. and then <laughs> super super fast at this point which yeah. is not exactly what i wanted but uh, if i move this one a little bit over to this side then we got this kind of stuff and they are all doing the same thing at a different time and right now i also still at the same pace if you want to to get into more detail of course you can change it for each curve and for each uh, square to yeah. make it more exciting and a little bit less predictable but i think this already helping a lot in making it less uniform and of course we could just do the same thing with going back so 
if I haven't already, uh, that's usually also something that I do in the beginning. I can just copy these keyframes over and paste them. No, I can't. Um, actually, <laughs> I can. Um, but I can clone these with this tool. Um, so so usually, useful. <laughs> usually, actually, um, if, if I don't do that, the, the thing that is um, the most useful is to set a keyframe at the beginning and at the end is the same keyframe without moving the squares and then in the middle changing the position. I have not done it now. I just forgot about it. Um, but in, in this case, um, you can see how helpful if a tool like that is. And yeah. If yeah. You... And that's available from um, motiondesign.school, right? Motion tools too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly the link where, but if you're just um, searching for motion tools 2 or 2.0, uh, then you will be able to find it. Yeah. And yeah, it's free. So uh, I definitely recommend to use something like that. Um, first, try to understand how these graphs work and then use this tool to, to help yourself a little yeah. bit because uh, definitely you're, you're saving yourself time if you're doing that. Uh, set the end keyframe to six second, uh, seconds right now and just let it loop once so we can see what we are working with so far and uh, it's ac actually not perfectly i think i have missed yeah i have missed this keyframe that should be the one that should also be copied over mm -hmm. and if it is then of course you can see that it's starting again at the same position and that it's seamless of yeah. course, uh, still you can see they are all slowing down and it's pretty obvious that there is a seam. So the thing that you can do is, of course, to um, kind of invert this or, or grab your keyframes and move them over yeah. to something like uh, the middle keyframe in the end, for example, and then also copy them to the start again so that the middle keyframe is also at the start. So basically what is going to happen if i just copy the first and that's the, that's the, the trick keyframe. isn't it is get, getting it so it it really doesn't pause yeah. in the middle of the motion so it exactly kind of, you it, are basically uh, cutting yeah. cutting the um, <clears throat> motion at some point uh yeah at the end where it's mm. it's still in motion so that the motion continues at the beginning again and now this should be um working pretty fine i actually I'm not sure which one i have been working with or actually because i set the still set the keyframe to the exact moment um there's of course a uh, little a little gap still so this is it can be a little bit fiddly um if you do this for the first time or if you have haven't done it in in some time to actually get it right uh, perfectly <laughs> So, um, of course, you don't want it at the keyframe because at this keyframe in time, it's still again at zero and you you kind of want to split it right there. Yeah. So basically, you are trying to offset it, uh, this part into the negative area where it's not showing and this part into the positive area where it's not showing, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then yep. you have a loop that is cutting the motion exactly in the middle without it being sh uh, shown in the final result. Yeah. And that's basically what you do for the um, squares. Can I just ask, um, Sandrine has a question, which by the way, she described your earlier curve uh, your, in the motion graph as a, a roller coaster. It takes you ages to get up and you suddenly yeah. drop away, which is a nice description. She's yeah, asking, kind of um, imagine you'd want to make the move by seemingly going further away and moving back would you have to turn them in 3D? Now, I know to some degree you could achieve that with scale, right? But would you, um, do you ever drop them into 3D and add a new camera? And... Let me just grab the posters back because um, I think you mean something like this. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think that, so. That's I think what that's, I'm understanding. Yeah. Um, in this case, it. Yes, I have actually used 3D layers. Yeah. Of course, you can fake the thing yeah. by um, not moving them in the Z or in, in, the, yeah. in the forward and backward direction, um, but moving them apart from the center, like it's basically doing here, the, the 
bar is moving from yeah, you're the getting center. perspective from it yeah. so yeah and it's you do. scaling up so you can fake it but it's just a lot more effort to get it done right yeah because if, if you just move it in perspective it will just do all of the scaling yeah. and positioning by itself just by moving it on this axis yeah so that's a lot easier the... definitely yes mm, yeah and and doing that is pretty easy actually you just have to um, basically just uh, turn this all of the stuff that you want into the 3D layer, and then you can. Uh, and in this case, it's not not working so perfectly because we're working. It's a shape layer, this. I think, isn't it? Or is it a yeah. mask that you've got on it? Yeah. Yeah, because we're working with this kind of group. Um, but you can see the um, widget the mask. Yeah. The mask that we are working with is actually moving like we wanted it to in, in 3D space. And that's exactly the thing. Yep. Um, if if it was set up a little bit more clean than this, <laughs> like I have done it, <laughs> then it would work perfectly fine. And you can also rotate it in 3D as well. Yep. So there's really not that much to it. And all of your um, keyframe stuff, uh, related stuff will change a little bit because you have three dimensions now you have the orientation in, on three axes and you have the position um, which you can also change on the i think it's also the z axis yeah yes you can yeah. yes exactly x uh, y and z so uh, i'll just turn this off again so that is a pretty easy back and forth you can just turn it off and on and now all of the options are gone again of course, if you turn it off and you have uh, your stuff set up before, uh, you will lose your information. Um, I'm not sure if it will be back again if you turn it on. I just would be uh, careful about it and test it out if you're planning on doing that. So that is mostly um, the animation for, for these. You can also, yeah, auto save. That's great. Um, about that and never never forget to save your project <laughs> if you want to be <laughs> don't want to lose your animation yes. um yeah and the next stuff pretty much in here you could also rotate these i didn't do that for the um, um vibrant squares i think only for the glass ones but i think this this step is pretty much the same thing you're you're going into rotation and then you're rotating it i think um there's not much to that um if you want to do it that way of course feel free to add some rotation to it as well um but the rest that we are going to do is on an adjustment layer so i'm creating a new adjustment layer the shortcut for that is also in here Control alt y and then you are having an adjustment layer which does currently nothing and now we can add several effects to make this stuff a little bit more punchy and fun so the first thing that i added is a glow effect which just at the default settings look looks pretty horrible um which isn't too bad don't worry about that um we can set the threshold to something very high like 99 percent uh 99.9 uh in my case and then you have right now this line which is also uh not perfectly looking so i set the radius to 300 instead of um, 10 now it looks better and of course re remember uh, um, to check this this stuff based on your composition size so it will vary if your composition is bigger smaller has a different resolution or something the effect just might look very different from that yeah it, intensity can stay the same so we have i mean it's a it. very the the dimensions of it are really really high so i mean you've got lots of yeah of room to so play with big effects you can also check if you maybe want want it even smoother 800 and if you think okay now it's smooth and nice but it's um losing a little bit of effect i can't see the glow so much anymore mm -hmm. you can create a copy of that and set one to 400 one to 800 just play around with the settings until you find something. There is no wrong or right. I'm just reusing these settings because that's what I used before. Um, but I think, I, I, I don't know, if I look at this, I I think this is this looks nice. I mm. would probably just go for that and maybe turn it down just a little bit, but I, I think it looks very nice uh, as well. But uh, we are also going to add a little bit more than that. Uh, so the next effect is the radial blur and i'm just 
typing those into the effects um, fen, uh, fenster. Yeah, the, the um, effects window. Wow. Window it is. Now we have the radial blur, which is making us a little bit motion sick, but we are also <laughs> changing the settings here. The amount, um, I think, yeah, I animated that one. I have changed uh, this, um, what is it called? Like, uh, yeah. Oh, I the, the on center, the, <laughs> the effect center. Where, where uh, were no, you no, sent? The, Sorry, the, the center is um, yeah. in the middle, but uh, yeah. the, the amount is uh, animated in the ah. final result. Yeah. Uh, so um, I will just leave it at like uh, twenty or something for now. I set the type to zoom and yep. left the anti -alias, uh, aliasing to uh, at low. Seed is also um random i i don't think that will really show up but i think the only thing that is changing with this uh with the seat is the noise that is created with this effect mm -hmm. because it is creating a little bit of noise otherwise i don't know what the seat could be for i just didn't use it so this is the radial blur so far not animated but uh that's fine for now and then i also use the cc composite effect and just left it at the default yes um, in front 100 percent and rgp only that's the stuff that we're having so what does it do it's just um, composing the original layer that we had before all the effects on top of everything that we just changed that we just yeah. used so um this effect is there but the original squares will still be visible and i think the effect is a little bit cleaner than this which is just completely blurry i'll just go back to 20 for now it's maybe a little bit easier on the eyes then i added some grain i'll just do it this way uh, which is also a plugin a little bit faster but i'm basically just typing it in here and applying it um, and now for the add grain effect, I used, um, or I um, don't recommend to use the final output if you are just working on the project because this effect is pretty slow. Um, so there is this preview box in the center. You can also set the scale in the preview region set settings. And you can maybe hopefully see on the stream, if I zoom in a little bit, that it is adding grain. Yep. And that is um, just to yeah, texturize the whole thing yep. a little bit. And I got the idea because the texture um, from the radial blur is already there. And so I added just a little bit more. Um, I'll, oops, no, don't crash now. What is going on? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah. Let, give it oh, a moment. Oh, let it, let it. Uh... Yeah, I'm 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 rendering it for some reason. I think I accidentally right, okay. pressed space, so that's it. Uh, okay, <laughs> panic over. No, uh, but you can see the effect is already pretty slow, even with a preview box with it, which is just 200 by 200. Um, so if you want to know the settings, I used 0.3 for the intensity, which is uh, comma three, not point. That doesn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, size at one, softness at zero, and the aspect ratio at one as well. And then if you want the final output in the end, remember to set it to final output. I will just leave this effect off because it, it's just, as I said, pretty performance heavy and it doesn't add super much. And I don't yeah. think it will show up on the stream anyway. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Tim, by the way, is prompting you to save. He's saying, don't forget to save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can save, but uh, yeah. I pretty much have the setup here already. Of course, yeah. if you like me to save this, uh, I can also do that. But there's not really something um, yeah. that I think it's always a good idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there will not be super much that will be lost, so yeah. we don't have to worry about so much. And okay, the next effect um, is the chromatic aberration. Um, which I also used and which is just called VR chromatic aberrations. And that is kind of uh, creating this color dispersion effect. And yep. um, yeah. I so that will work pro uh, mo most prominently when it between green and magenta. So you'll end up with 
<clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, for example. Yeah. Um, as it says, it's somehow um, used for, or it's supposed virtual to be reality. used for mm -hmm. virtual reality, yes, but you are the, you are the, the designer, you can use whatever you want, you can do whatever you want. Um, and <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly what I did. So yeah. I used this effect and I didn't change the frame layer out, uh, the view, I think. I left uh, most of the stuff at the same. I just um, changed the aberration red from minus 10 to minus 5 and aberration blue from 10 to 5, so half of that. Fall of distance is at 50 and the fall of invert is set to off to no. And then basically just copy this effect or apply it again, because in the second version, all we will do is actually invert the fall off. So um, one time we have the effect at the outer parts and one time we have it in the inner parts. The inner parts, affecting yeah. Affecting cool. the inner area. So. If you don't like one of that, of course, you can also turn off one of those. But this is what I have done for this whole thing. And one last thing, let me check how I actually did it in here, because I am not exactly 100% sure. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> makes sense to me now um another thing that i have been using uh, let me just collapse all of these so we have have this effect now and the thing that i have been talking about but not done yet is the amount that i have been animating and also let me check really quickly what settings i used so 70 in the middle and 10 at the beginning and at the end and i'll just redo this pretty much just leave it at 20 and at the end at the beginning just set another keyframe with this little diamond over there and now in this middle we will set it to something like 70 as well so pretty dominant pretty much uh, uh, very visible very much creating all of this blur all over the place and that is not exactly the case here you can see it's like moving around in this very specific pattern mm. which is also exciting so how do we do that of course uh you might have guessed it with this red layer with this white solid that i have used that also has a few effects and we will be oops yeah i just <laughs> targeted another window and now the zoom is freaking out Let's go back to this, create a new solid layer. Control Y is the shortcut for that. You can leave the base settings. Also, this solid, uh, I, I see just this composition is set to the full size. Um, something that you should maybe keep in mind. I have not done it in this one. So uh, the, um, the effects will also be a little bit different than that. So um uh, maybe just uh you, you you just need to use other values than i have right now don't panic about that uh now the solid <clears throat> just does nothing it's just make, making everything right uh, white right now and of course if i animate the rotation for this one by just one it also will not really do much it, it's just rotating and <laughs> very boring but that will be um, kind of the effect that we are looking for i think if you look closely you can see that this uh, effect is kind of rotating around the center yeah a little bit and that is exactly what i did with this um, layer as well um and so right now i just rotated it by one full rotation from zero to the end left it at linear and again and we are also using some um, turbulent Displace, noise, yeah. noise yeah. first oh, noise. and then the dis displacement after. Yes, we'll both be in here. So I had the fractal type at basic, the noise type set to soft linear, um, not inverted as far as I know, the contrast very high, 2430 and uh, brightness set to zero. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that will actually do something, but yeah, that's what I had. Um, complexity is set to one. And I feel like I am missing the size somehow. I'm not sure why, because this is um, pretty, pretty uh, small right now, which is not exactly what I wanted subscaling. Maybe I forgot to check these settings. Let me just go in here. Okay. I don't think so. Uh, so the, the result in this case looks like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is. Right now, I can't tell. It shouldn't be because my um, layer size is doubled because uh, that is not double the size of this. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit stuck <laughs> right now, actually. I don't know what I did differently. Um, okay. of, course, of course, we can pretty much just scale this layer up. Is that what I did? No, I'm confused, but you can do that. There's always a workaround. You can scale up this layer. Um, yeah. That should be creating pretty much the same effect. Right now, we have a little bit of um, aliasing, but OK, that is just because the resolution, the auto resolution is set to quarter, I think. It should be fine. Um, but otherwise, uh, we, we will also just use the um, fast box blur. Anyway, uh, the blur radius was set to 64. And I think that is also something that doesn't work in this case. Yeah, pretty much just go for something that is closer to this. I think we are further there than we were before. I really don't know. I'm, I'm sorry for the size do you want to just take out <laughs> what you could do is just try taking out the turbulent noise again and, and just re-add it and just see if it's something you could i can't quite see your interface very clearly because it's so tiny on the screen i'm on i'm sorry so i can't <laughs> yeah okay can't uh, I, I missed I a bowl today <laughs> yeah i think i mean i i left it at the the settings that i had so uh it okay. shouldn't be affecting it any in any way um I, I will actually just um, run the scaling script really quickly, maybe. So let's see if that does anything for us. So scale factor 0.5. Now it's uh, at our desired settings. Okay. And it might mess up in the full composition, but we can really easily fix that. And I don't know. If I set this back to 100, it should, yeah. That doesn't change too much. I don't know. Um, Basically, you're just looking for some uh, large scale size uh, noise like this, and you can also do it differently. Of course, you can also use a different fractal type or something that's uh, not really, um, there's not really much to that. If you just prefer something different, of course, there's a lot. And yeah, and, and of course, in some uh, some of these you need to change the contrast because uh, otherwise it just will be completely. And also black. the blur, that the uh, if the yeah. blur is too strong. Exactly. Yeah. So um, these settings in, in in general just work with this kind of stuff. And I know this the scaling is just off by something. And, mm -hmm. and I scaled up the whole layer. That's that's okay. It will be blurry anyways. We are not looking for some high res detail here. And then the last effect that we are adding is the whoops, yeah. uh, turbulent displays like yeah. we already It's all good though, uh, David. Honestly, it's happened to me before. I've been doing yeah. something thinking, why isn't that working? And then afterwards, <laughs> yeah, totally. I thought, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it shows it's really live, which is, which is the yeah, important exactly. thing. Right? You can you can prepare as much as you yeah. want. I mean, I, I actually, I have, I have it all here. It's all down there i even set red boxes for the animated stuff and yep. and so on but still something went oh, wrong. the level of detail of your yeah. plan is just so so impressive i love it yeah i just didn't really want to go back and forth between those because that would be the other thing that would yep. uh, be the other option for me uh, because i don't have all of these values in head i i just randomly chose them and yeah just work yeah. Uh, look for what works 
So um, turbulent displays. I just set this to bulge, uh, bulge smoother and the mount set to 100, the size to 250 and then the ev evolution should be animated also um, to, for example, zero to, to one, you just need one full turn. You can also set it to minus one if you are funky and if you want to use that. <clears throat> There's nothing stopping you from that, but what you also want to check is in the evolution options, the cycle evolution. So what that does basically is it cycles it every, whatever you say here, every one uh, revolution, it will be the same as in the start. Otherwise that will not be the case. So now we have a little bit of um, turbulent displays as well. And I think also in this case here, the um, size is not working as perfectly as in the other one. I would probably go with a little bit of different sizing here. Whoops, that was mm -hmm. far too less, but maybe something 100, I think, could be working a little bit better. I don't know, but um, yeah, definitely something in my opinion something worth looking into and just spending some time and on on this and trying out a little bit of different stuff there so you can uh, maybe turn off the fast box blur so it's a little bit faster but you can see that it's changing its shape also and not just rotating around the center in the other version um, it was actually changing a little bit more than that as well so the final result something looks something like this. It's changing a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, but for some reason, the um, proportions are a little bit off in here for reasons I can't figure out. But that's exactly why I'm saying uh, these values are not set in stone. Just go for something that works for your project. And now the last thing that we need to do to make this effect work is set this layer to, uh, or go to the toggle switches or modes so that we can actually do and see that and set this um, mode to, no, not the uh, mode, but the uh, the track mat, the, yep. the alpha mat to uh, the white solid for the adjustment layer. And you can also check if you want to have it inverted or not. And, or yeah, I think in this case, the Luma, um, you should you should uh, change it to Luma mat or inverted mat if you want to have the same effect. And then you can see what it is doing. It's just basically masking out the effect. There's also different ways to do this, but you can use this one. And uh, what I have not done is the fast box blur enabled again. So now we basically have this effect back again just render out a little bit here in the middle you can see it is um, a little bit more detailed than before the clouds that are moving around are a little bit smaller than the last time but i think this also works totally fine yeah, the, yeah. the result is absolutely not the same than the last time but yeah who cares you I mean, still get that impression of a shine though yeah, but, yeah. i think it, it still works out perfectly fine mm. so just go for something that is to your own liking. And then we have basically pretty much the vibrant squares done, which is uh, already a big part of the whole uh, effect. And then we can go back into this, which ooh, looks funky. Of that was, looks you did funky. say about the scaling thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, now the scaling is off in here as well. So yep. I can just scale it up by two again and maybe uh, turn off, no, don't turn off this, <clears throat> turn this on, I mean, um, that will mess up some, yeah, some things like that need to be changed afterwards. And now we already have this kind of effect over there. So that is pretty nice. And also I haven't set this for my new project, let this, be at oh i will just set it back to no 
one second. <laughs> um, okay, so good. Also, also um, scale this down because uh, I forgot in this project. I just did it for the other one and I haven't done it in here. So everything is back to 100% now. Um, also, everything is back to our desired resolution and it should be working a little bit smoother than before. So that's good. Now it shouldn't be as much of a problem anymore. And yeah, we have our vibrant squares, so we can work on the other effects. Um, <clears throat> I think we will probably go for some of the stuff tomorrow as well, because yeah. uh, there's not super much time anymore, but yeah. I think that's totally fine. Um, I think I'll just go the way I was going in, in my um, project. Plan. Yeah. I mean, don't forget, yeah. you've got a longer session tomorrow with Joe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you've so got all that, you've got can, extra time. So. We don't have to rush it. We can just no. chill here. Yes. And exactly. Um, the next step that I did is the title text animation. So all of these um, little um, text blocks in between. And this is also super easy. I basically did the same style with um, the boxes as with the boxes. And so I will set the end to six seconds with N on the keyboard. I think I haven't mentioned that as well. N sets your um, trimming to this point where you are currently. And then I can also grab these four and set a position keyframe again. And then I'll just do another and move these over to the side, for example, like that, and like that, maybe, and then usually if I go with all of these, I just do them all at the same time, at the same pacing at first. And if I'm done with the effect, like um, totally, I will just change up their position in, in the timeline so that I can control them all at once and then um, make them a little bit more, uni uh, not uniform, more unique. So um, in this case, I think I was going with um, something like the effect that we already had before. Let me go into this again. This super spiky graph, I think is what I did and just made them go really quick like that and then they're going back it takes a little while to render of course uh, so but the effect looks like that and then back to normal and then after that pretty much what is left to do is to also take these um, put them into the future for example if I want to offset this and then make sure that these are set to the same thing. So for example, if I set oh, just the last keyframes, 30 frames before the end, I will make sure to set these to minus 30 keyframes. So in this case, I can grab the middle one because I can't see the first one anymore, but it's still there. It's basically at minus 30 frames. Yeah. And now it should be also looping uh, which layer was that actually? Okay, this one. We need to pay attention to this one. So now it's moving a little bit before all of the rest. Now it's moving back to this position and just render the end, the break mostly. That is what we are curious about, if it's looking fine or not. And it looks pretty good to me. Yes. Same. So, yeah, it starts to move out of the frame at the end and then, or not out of the frame, but to the left, and then it will continue to move to the left at the beginning and go back. And that's pretty much the same that you can do for all of these layers. Or if you want, don't want to do that like that for all of these, uh, you can just change it in your time frame. So now there's offset. Yep, auto save. Okay, and now they're not moving all at the same time. And it looks 
less like a seam, like a visible seam. Yes. Although, of course, there will always be the seam at the end. And that's pretty much the stuff that I did for the text. That's all left to do for that. Then we have um, the info text around this. And there's also, uh, there's no animation on that, but there is a little bit of effects um, on those. I just chose uh, the color. I can just type the color in here and find it. Maybe if I, or I, I think I um, actually converted these to, or I'm not sure. Maybe I converted these to um, shape. Yeah, so they because look like outlines. Right, right now that uh, doesn't work. But um, <coughs> of course, if I oh, also I have uh, still set them to shy. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I did that yesterday, so that they are not in the way. So um, yeah, of course, if I do it now, the color will show up, and they will be able to be changed. So uh, I can just. Use the color picker and that is basically what i did i choose uh choose different colors from my scene somewhere and a green and then another one orange yep. it's not the same style right now which one is this oh there there we go um what is left i think not really much i can maybe go for light blue Oh, this one also. Oh, I, yeah, I set the stroke color. Oops, yeah, stroke. Um, I hope there's no stroke. No. Okay, so something like that. And then we can also apply another glow effect. Oops, not a flow effect. That's nice as well, but uh, a glow effect to all of these. And they just have another threshold, uh, I think mostly 20. And if you just have a very vibrant color like um this yellow for example i would set it to 60 or something similar to that also yep. just go for something that works the radius on those were 100 pixels and now these are glowing as well i can also just copy this effect to this layer and this layer just the normal copy and pasting as we are all familiar with yes and, indeed yeah you can see uh yeah. it's just giving it a tiny little hint of mm. glow and of course yeah if this is maybe not yet glowing that much you can lower the threshold or make the right radius a little bit larger copy the effect if you want and change the radius to half of that that's something i do quite often copy an, a glow effect and set the radius to uh, either the double or half of the previous yeah, value. it improves the fall off doesn't it it just yeah it, yeah pretty much absolutely yeah exactly that's yeah. that's what i'm going with um if i do that and then that is also pretty much done i think yeah nice left the intensity at what we had before as well yeah no really thing good is left is the glass effect for the other squares so i mean it's it's kind of showing already because we we had it from xd over yep. from xd but um i will also show how to create this by hand from scratch if you are not using it via xd because i think the workflow from xd isn't isn't so perfect because this this file that is created from xd is just a uh, somewhere in a temp folder on your, on your PC or something. And it's um, also creating these these assets in the way that it just did before these groups and so on. So if you are working with an Illustrator file, that is a little bit nicer. And yeah, it's... <clears throat> then you have to create the effect by yourself. Yes, absolutely. Well, we are pretty much at time, David. So thank you so much again for today. It's been lovely uh, spending... This couple of days you'll have to watch as a viewer tomorrow um myself because you'll be here with the lovely joe <laughs> allen so uh look forward to seeing that but no great stuff uh everybody in the chat seems to have enjoyed it they were saying thank you in there <clears throat> pardon me you're welcome of course now my throat gets choked up <laughs> there you are. no nice stream everybody's enjoying that so thanks again really good 
And uh, yeah, we'll all see you tomorrow here on Adobe Live, behance.net slash Adobe Live. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Take care yeah. now. Bye-bye. I'm looking forward to it. Goodbye. <laughs>